This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. It has been two weeks because all of last week, none of my podcasts went out because everybody... Everybody else that's been on my shows have had their metaphor glasses kicked all the last week, so so this, my other podcast, Port Charlie Podcast and Constructive Deconstruction, have all ended up having to take a week off because shit happened. God damn it. But we're back now. And this week is usually would be Cat's Week, but she's off in Tulsa, Oklahoma at I, I, at some con. So uh, we, we got somebody to fill in for her and her name is Axiom. Yo. Yes. Those of you who've listened before, you've heard her on the show before. We've brought her back. Yes, I'm. Send help. I'm in chains. S O S O S. I'm gonna send my wristwatch out on a cat. <laughs> on a cat. Do you remember that movie? I don't remember the movie, but I remember was... an episode of South Park where Cartman tried to do something similar with his cat. Yeah, it was that darn cat. Yeah. It's a Disney movie. Anyway, that is entirely beside the point. Yes. <laughs> so, since you've last been on the show, what have you been up to? Well, I've been working my ass off. I have moved a couple of times, and in lieu of making videos, I have actually been doing some research and writing a screenplay on the life of Clara Bow, who was one of Hollywood's first sex symbols in the silent era. Ooh. It's uh, it's It's been pretty interesting going, but also really, really sad for a lot of reasons, um, not least of which... About half of her movies are gone. Oh, no. Yeah, in December of last year, the uh, Library of Congress did um, a survey about surviving silent movies, and they discovered that 70% of all the movies made between 1900 and 1930 are gone. Oh, no. Like, and of the 30% that survive, something like half of them are incomplete or... Um, severely degraded so it's a horrible thing but fortunately enough of clara bow's movies survive that it's at least it's at least possible to do some research on her so oh that's good yes oh yeah so <laughs> so clara bow's uh, i guess a biopic you're working on yeah more or less i don't think there has ever been one um there have been people who've tried but for some reason, I believe because she is the subject of a lot of Hollywood mm -hmm. sordid sex gossip that her children and grandchildren decided they did not want to allow a biopic made. So I have no idea what that means for me attempting to make one, but um, hopefully hopefully it will transpire because she was a very interesting person and also a very tragic person. And she and Marilyn Monroe wrote fan letters to each other, which I find fucking awesome in every possible way. Yes, it, it's it, it would be like knowing that David Tennant and Matt Smith started writing fanfic, not fan fiction. Fan fiction of each other would be nice too, but fan, that would be fan letters to each other. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like yeah, she actually Marilyn Monroe actually predeceased her in the 1960s. It's really sad yeah. because for the first Clara Bow went towards the end of her life was a complete recluse, never left home, never talked to anybody except for the nurse that she lived with. And when Marilyn Monroe died, she actually issued a public statement for the first time in something like 15 years. Wow. And she went on record saying, um, I never met Marilyn Monroe, but if I had, I would have tried to help her because being a sex symbol is a difficult burden to bear when one is young and bewildered and hurt. Yeah, and how many, how many people since that time have taken that lesson to heart, I wonder? I feel like I feel like not enough because everybody discovers far too late that being a sex symbol is a difficult thing to do. Yeah. I mean, it's not, just, it's not just sitting there and looking pretty and having everybody admire you. You've got They've got things they want you to do. They have standards they want you to uphold. Mm -hmm. Probably easier doing porn. I'm actually reading a book right now about the history of dirty movies. I shit you not. <laughs> nice. Yes. Uh, I, you know, I, I should put you in, you know, you, once you read up a little bit more, I should put you in touch with Josh Hadley because he... Yeah? Yeah, because he does... Um, one of his shows is called Radio Drum, and they take a look at all sorts of different <laughs> movies. And one of the things that he is on record, you know, talking about from time to time is like old porn movies. I mean, this we're talking like like, like this old, sounds fucking awesome. Yeah, like old porn movies back when they were actually 
shown in movie theaters. You mean back when you would have to carry an umbrella so the guy behind you didn't masturbate down the back of your coat? Something like that. <laughs> oh, but but of course, wow. but of course, as we all know, they can't show them in movie theaters anymore because we have to think of the children. I know. I, I work at a movie theater now, so about two or three weeks ago, a little kid, she must have been like eight or ten, maybe, came up to me and asked if our movie theater showed X-rated movies. <laughs> I'm like, first of all, why do you know what that is? Second of all, why do you want to know if we show them here? We show Disney movies. No, go away. <laughs> no, that would be. Oh God, that would. Be, what, what kind of a theater would it take to show like one screen? You would have Disney. You would have like like. Well, what's the latest one? Frozen, and then on the other Frozen? one. Frozen? No, the latest Disney movie. I don't think so. Hmm. Maleficent is the latest one. Okay, Maleficent. Then I'm a li- I'm a little bit behind on my Disney canon. Yes, you are. You're a bad person. Yeah. It's downright un-American. Well, I'm working on it. I saw Tangled recently, and I enjoyed it. I love the fuck out of Tangled. Anyway, yes, like a <laughs> double feature with a Disney flick and a porno flick. Well, not a double feature. Just, you know, you have a Disney feature on one screen, then on another screen you have a porno. That would not – and, and <laughs> what would be really, really hard, no pun intended, to deal with is if they both got out at the same time. Yes, and then you'd have like a bunch of happy skipping little children, and then you'd have men with dark glasses and trench coats. <laughs> or not e- or it's like, not even feel- that. You you could always just because yeah, I wouldn't be one of those. I wouldn't have the I might have the trench coat because I own one and I fucking love wearing the thing, but I wouldn't have the sunglasses. I wouldn't be furtive. I would probably just walk out, just kind of walking. Like, like yeah, I just uh, did this, and what? Yeah, because and. Oh my god, that would be like the worst daddy daughter movie night ever. Be like, oh okay, god. honey, okay, honey, you go see your movie. I'm gonna go see daddy's movie. Oh god, I'm gonna take this giant bottle of lotion and this roll of toilet paper with me. Oh no! <laughs> now everybody and everybody listening to this is like, oh my god, did my dad ever do that? <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure half the people listening to this grew up in an era when they did still show. Well, I know, like, I know at least some of movies. Them did. I know some of them did. Some of them are still younger, so uh, so you, who knows? Oh what, God! Why is this conversation happening? It just happens. It happens. It it grows and blooms like a beautiful flower. However, there are some flowers that were never that that tried to bloom, but they just kind of died, and that's Dashcon. Did you hear? Dashcon. Yes. No, I have not heard. You about did that. not hear about all of this. Nope. Well, I'm not going to go into too much detail over it because I kind of want to save it for a show when Holly is on. Uh, Either this one or Constructive Deconstruction, whichever one we decide, because she has been all over it. (laughs) She was all over it uh, last night, and and, oh god. Uh, I've I've got a little kind of bullet point set uh, master sheet here. Uh, DashCon is the first year fandom convention for Tumblr users. Oh, dear sweet baby Jesus, this is going to be terrible. I have got to hear this. Yes. So, um... It... What do they make you do? Just, like, select your pronouns at the door? Uh, like, actually, instead no. Of... Actually, no. It has nothing to... Yeah, it, it's not really much like that. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm listening. A couple of things here. Due to Dashcon's Dashcon staff gone diddly goofing by not putting a payment schedule in their hotel reservation contract, they were asked to pay twenty thousand by ten p.m. Uh, I think it was Friday night, or the convention would be kicked out of the hotel. Holy shit! So, Did they do it? so they ended up, they ended up uh, asking their users, you know, the attendees and Tumblr users, to donate seventeen thousand via PayPal and cash to keep the con going, and supposedly they raised all the money. Mm-hmm. And the con attendees then piled into the ballroom, reading exactly from uh, conventionhorrorstories.tumblr.com. By the way, is where I'm reading this. <laughs> this is where I'm reading this. So, oh my um, god! They piled into the ballroom to do mocking Jay salutes and wail Freddie Mercury songs, celebrate them, falling for what is suspected to be a scam. As people have contacted the hotel about to ask about the seventeen thousand dollar fee, and the hotel reportedly has no idea what they're talking about. Oh. Fuck. Yeah, that's no, that's one thing. There's also, um, I also want to note that this is in Chicago. Yeah, which I sense mafia ties. I'm just gonna say it. Yeah, I have no evidence that it's true, but you have no evidence that it's not true. Yeah, uh, and one of the panels that that they have up on their schedule is called mm-hmm. "Can You Not?" It's K N O T, and oh. it's exploring the Omegaverse. 
Yeah. Okay, I'm. Don't ask how I know this. Just accept that I do. Mm-hmm. Um. The to use to use not K N O T as a verb is a term used in the um bestiality enthusiast community. Oh shit! That, that... because don't again don't ask how I know this, but it's a part of a dog dick. It's got a bulb on it. Again, this. Perfectly innocent reason I know about this, but it is it is a verb and it refers to taking that particular part of a dog's anatomy into whatever orifice. <laughs> this week we learned about bestiality. <laughs> well, it is now. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Um, some other things. Uh, they were trying. They apparently had gotten the guys from Welcome to Night Vale wow. to try and come to perform, but they didn't have the money to cover their transportation and performance fees. So they have to hitch. And. The Night Vale guys are like, hey, can you pay the remainder of the stuff and and all that before we begin? And Dashcon was like, we can't. Uh, well, that's and, nice of them. Yeah. Uh, their game room consisted of some tables, one TV, and a gaming console. Um, and I know at one point uh, there, there was like some kind of thing that, that happened. I'm, I'm having a hard time finding it on the list, but – to make up for some of the stuff they gave their con goers like an extra hour in the ball pit. They have a ball pit? They have a ball pit. And it's not even really a ball pit. It's a kiddie pool filled with those little uh you know, those little plastic balls. That's their ball pit. That sounds really disappointing. It does. I was gonna say that that almost makes it a remediating feature of this clusterfuck, but that's not. No. <laughs> yeah. It's just... And, no. This and, is the kind – see, this is the kind of t- complete lack of preparedness and campiness and general, this sucks, I'd rather be at the dentist Yeah, and, atmosphere. This is what you would expect from, like, tripod con. <laughs> like tripod anybody, con. Like, this is some, – it's something that does not have a big user base. Not anymore. It used to once upon a time. But it doesn't have a user base anymore. It's gone defunct. Or, like, Angel Fire Con. Oh, God. This is something that doesn't have a big enough user base to really be able to gather those kinds of funds. But Tumblr is a huge, huge network of people. If everybody on Tumblr donated a dollar, they could hold this con, like, seven times in a row. Oh, yeah. Um. So – Obviously, somewhere along the lines, the funds have been totally misappropriated, and I am definitely interested to hear where the fucking money went. I am too. Maybe maybe it went to Ahuvia Harrell's laser hair removal surgery. I don't really know. It may be. Uh, let's see. Uh, they also claimed there would be 3,000 to 7,000 attendees, and at most showed up were about 1,000. Wow, this is, this is sounding like such a great time. Yeah. And a full weekend badge was $65 for a first year fandom con. And it's like, for a first year? I mean, I know there's another con that, that uh, Mars Girl and her husband, yes, they mm-hmm. are married now. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy fuck. When did that happen? Uh, actually, a couple of weeks ago. They're okay, on... so I'm not that far behind. Okay. Yeah, they're on their honeymoon right now. Uh, you know, as, as wow, the... chicka, wow, wow. Well, also a lot of Disney World. Yeah, you can't vouch a wow wow at Disney World. Well, I mean, you can, but it just feels wrong. <laughs> oh, come on. I made out with my then girlfriend in line at Space Mountain once. Did you have sex on Space Mountain? That's the question. No. Has anybody ever had sex on Space Mountain? How would you do it? I don't know. I've seen I've seen a video of a couple having sex on a moving motorcycle. So if you are that sufficiently motivated, you could probably figure it out. I am not that small. She was. I wasn't. I'm still okay, not fine. that small. <laughs> it would be mid it would be midget sex on Space Mountain, but it could probably happen. There you go. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> but... Okay, let's move let's move on from this. Yes. yes TumblrCon yes, so. is Tumblr TumblrCon is a clusterfuck. Funds have been misappropriated. Nobody knows why or how, and apparently the organizers are not being forthcoming with the information. So it's like a convention for the Republican Party. Oh snap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh. And on and on the Republican Party note, yeah, let's well, continue. Yeah, well, before we before we hit the news, I do have a couple of shout outs. Two of them because you know the last couple of weeks and things happened. First off, Diva, holy shit, the Diva, who, <laughs> who does musical hell and know the score both on both of course on my site RT Gomer Productions and over on RVT. She was recently on Jeopardy. 
Seriously? Yes, seriously. You could probably find it on YouTube or, or somewhere because somebody uh, I'm sure as hell recorded that shit. I watch, I got to watch like part of the first day. I missed the other two days because she was on three days, which means she wow. won twice. That's fucking amazing. That is. She is awesome. To the internet? Yes. <laughs> oh, but yeah, it was, it was great. So it was like she, she and her family, they're planning some sort of thing, which, hey, rightfully so. They have a shit ton of money. <laughs> So well, they have some money. I feel like you you get to keep like half of that after taxes. Yeah. But it's still, hey, it's a car payment. Fuck yes. There you go. Uh, the other one is one I discovered. I, I've heard about a little bit over on LordCat.com. dot com, mm-hmm. uh, and they don't do it often, but they have this thing called Watt W A T. And I went, I grabbed their most recent one, which was uh, last month. And all it is is basically Lord Cat grabs like a few of his friends together on a stream, and they watch some of the most fucked up shit. Or, or not necessarily just fucked up shit, but just shit that makes you go, what? Uh, like what? What are we talking about here? Well, some some of it is mindfuckery. One of them that really stood out was I think it was uh, Jenny McCarthy. Ever, anything that anything that woman says or does is yeah, very. Ridiculous. Very Watt worthy, because well, as if for people who don't know, Jenny McCarthy is the is the woman who went out and convinced everybody not to get vaccinations because they supposedly cause autism when they fucking don't, because autism is not caused caused by vaccinations. Autism autism is not like fucking hepatitis. You don't get it from a dirty needle. No. God, I hate that woman. That woman is essentially. More or less single-handedly responsible for every major antique medical outbreak in the United States in the last 10 years. Yeah, if, if we end up contracting polio across the country, I'm blaming her. I'm not going to because I'm vaccinated because I, vaccines don't fucking cause autism. This is true. So fuck uh, that bitch. Exactly. Uh, well, well, no, no, don't fuck that bitch. You could get, a, you could get an infection. Yeah, probably. An infection of stupid. Mm. They say don't stick your dick in crazy, but yeah, but you know, depending on the crazy, it might be fine. Don't stick your no. dick in stupid. Is yeah, what it I like that. Crazy is okay, but don't stick your dick in stupid. Yeah, because there are degrees of crazy. But then you have pants on head stupid. <laughs> you don't do that. <laughs> and Jenny McCarthy is pants on head stupid. Yes. Speaking of pants on head stupid... Uh, unless you've got a shout out or two of your own, we should go ahead and um, news. I don't think so right now, um, because I I haven't been wandering around the internet looking for anything particular except for um, like old silent movies. Incidentally, if you are into silent movies in any way, look for them online because anything made before nineteen twenty five twenty seven mm-hmm. is um is public domain. Sweet. So you can't get in trouble in any way for um, downloading them. And oh yes, I do. I do have a website. My roommate just handed it to me. It is howvaccinescauseautism.com. dot com. It'll tell you exactly how vaccines cause autism. In fact, pause this. Everybody's listening. Pause this right now. <laughs> Open up another browser tab and type that in. It's all one word. Howvaccinescauseautism.com. dot com. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Do it. Yeah. Do, do it. it. Just just go ahead and do it. No, seriously. Don't just keep playing to see where we're going. <laughs> pause it. Pause and go look it up, and it'll tell you exactly how vaccines cause autism. Yeah. In fact, I'm doing it right now. Yes, please as, do it right as now. As I am recording the show. Go ahead. So, do it. So, so let's see. Uh, oh, oh, I, I must have caught, I must have typed it in wrong because I didn't get it. I don't think I got what you were aiming for, but you guys out there probably did. But I'm willing I to. I feel like is is that a consistent problem with you not getting what you're aiming for? Something like that. <laughs> well, shit. Yeah, but but the times I do get what I'm aiming for, it's really glorious. Mm. Giggity. Yes, very much so. So anyway, we'll, we'll go ahead and hit the news. And yes. this one come this first one comes out of Indianapolis. Yeah, still live there. It's 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 a nice place. Except Although, for this dude. Yeah, except for the governor. Indiana Governor Mike Pence's office is telling state agencies to act as if no gay marriages had been performed during the three days following a federal court order. The memo from the governor's chief chief counsel tells executive branch agencies to execute their functions as though the June 25th court order had not been issued. 
for those who don't know, a federal judge in Indianapolis struck down the state's gay marriage ban as unconstitutional that day, leading to hundreds of same-sex marriages around the state. Whee! Yay, gay marriage! Let's all throw rainbows up. Except apparently no, because we're not. We're, we're just supposed to pretend that these marriages did not happen. Yeah, that it, it's, it's like, okay, Governor Pence, I, I'm, I'm going to say this to you directly, sir. And and I shouldn't even give you this, sir. But you know what? I'm I'm gonna give you a little bit of respect because I I I think you're doing this out of just sheer stupidity and trying to suck the metaphorical cock of the wrong part of the of the populace here. No, he's not. That's gay. Well, metaphorical or whatever body part there. And who knows? He might be. You never know. He might be <clears> bi. <throat> he... No, he's not. Bisexuality doesn't exist. Go on. Uh huh. Right. I, I have a few co-hosts that would um. <clears throat> I would like to uh, disagree with that. But anyway, point is, Governor Pence, um, just because you don't you, – you ignore it, just because you want people to ignore it doesn't mean it did not happen. Yeah. You know, you, you just because you don't believe in it doesn't mean it's not true. You yeah. Know, when it comes to facts and science, something that can be proven. Like, okay, line of sight thing, my 3DS. It's one of those Pikachu 3DS XLs, and it is yellow. Somebody could say, well, I don't believe it's yellow. And unless you're colorblind, then you, I would just have to shove this to you. It's like, no, it doesn't matter what you believe because it is yellow. Or e even better, even better. It's like you can you can ignore the reality all you want, but it, things are going to start to be really terrible. Like, Grandma has a heart attack and dies. It's a very sad thing. And you can go on for three days saying, no, Grandma did not have a heart attack and prop her up at the dinner table and sit her in front of Jeopardy, you know, and do whatever, but... She's going to start to bloat. It's better just to acknowledge that this thing that you may not like happened. I'm yeah. sorry. I did not mean to compare gay marriage to a dead lady. <laughs> but <laughs> but, it, it's, but it works. Because, yeah, it's happened. It's going to keep happening once the – once once the, the stay – because I, th I think there was – yeah, the appeals court stayed the thing three days later. But you know what? The stay is going to be overturned. It, you know, gay mm -hmm. marriage is going to happen in Indiana. The crossroads of America is going to have gay marriage, just like its neighbor to the west, Illinois. Yep. Mm. Mm, so yeah, it's going to happen. Just just deal with it, and and embrace it. And you know what? If you don't like gay marriage, if you don't want to be gay married, don't get gay married. But yeah, don't. But don't damn and and keep these these guys over here from doing it. That's their business. You have yours. All right. Exactly. That's all there is to it. Oh. It's like there's you. It is 2014. You really, really don't have a leg to stand on if you think gay marriage should not be a thing. Um. You know, whatever justification you use for that, I'm just going to come right out and say it, is fucking wrong. You're an idiot. You're an idiot and a bigot, and I really can't think of any reason that holds water. Yeah. Um, you know, the Bible says it's wrong. Too fucking bad. The Bible says that mixed fibers and cheeseburgers are wrong. So fucking what? Um, well, let's see. I'm, I'm probably wearing something that's mixed fibers, and I love my goddamn cheeseburgers. You will not take my cheeseburgers from me. And I love bacon cheeseburgers, which is, like, triple uh, bad. I want a bacon cheeseburger now. Wow. <laughs> you might want to – you want to go clean your pants? <laughs> Maybe. I did not hear – I did not need to hear that sound. <laughs> but they're just that good. I know they are, but keep it in your pants, chief. <laughs> Not oh. your, your, not the cheeseburger. Don't put the cheeseburger in your pants. I feel like no. that would be a bad idea. No. And a waste That's of a cheeseburger. Not. Yeah, very much a waste. Un unless – never mind. Moving anyway. On. Moving on. Uh, we're going down to Texas. Of course we are. There's always – has there been a single one of these where Texas is not featured at some point? Um, possibly, but usually it's because somebody in Texas hasn't done anything stupid that's worth mentioning that isn't a repeat. Oh. But this one, I don't think it's much of a repeat. No, and it's worth mentioning because it's stupid as fuck. Yeah. After a busy few months trying to impeach Attorney General Eric Holder, increase carbon pollution, and wipe out limits on campaign contributions, Tea Party favorite Senator Ted Cruz, a Republican, of course, from Texas, is now working to sell off America's national forest parks and other public lands. Really? Yeah, What? where could you possibly go wrong with that? Hmm. What is what is the worst that could happen with that? Oh. Apart from everything. Yeah. 
On Tuesday, Cruz filed an amendment to the Bipartisan Sportsman's, Sportsman's Act of 2014 to force the federal government to sell off a f- significant portion of the country's most prized lands in the West. The amendment would prohibit the federal government from owning more than 50% of any land within one state and requires the government to transfer the excess land to the, to the states or sell it to the highest bidder. Federal lands make up one-fifth of the nation's land mass and over 50% of the land Nevada, Utah, Idaho, Oregon, and Alaska. Or in them, rather. Okay, okay. You have editors, people. Come on. Under Cruz's proposal, these states, which are home to some of the country's most beloved national parks, forests, wildlife areas, and iconic natural natural resources would be forced to either pass the cost of managing these lands along to the state taxpayers or, more likely, give them away or sell them off for mining, drilling, and logging. And there is the reason – they're right there. Cruz is wanting to get these sold off to big company so you know we could drill for more oil here in the country or or you know do anything chop else down, with it. Chop down 300-year-old trees and dig giant holes for shiny things. Yeah, it's like, you, you know, we don't – we're getting to a point to where we, we are finding alternative means of power. We have wind power. We have solar power. There's a guy that's working on solar-paneled roads. Yeah, I've read about that. You know, and, but, and I keep one, I keep thinking that, that among that – you know, along with that, at some point, if we have electric cars, they could like help charge them up or something. I think I could be wrong. I, I could be. That would be hilarious. It would be people stopped all along the road with their cars plugged into the <laughs> sockets in the middle of the road, like a line of people at the mall charging their iPhones. Well, that would be funny, but I, but I was more meaning, you know, just charge up the, you know, keep the car charged as it's going down the road. So I like my idea better. It's funnier. Well, there you go. Maybe it'll be both. That would be interesting. <laughs> Oh yeah. Yes. So, so and we're just gonna. So let me get this straight. This guy wants to sell off national forests and put up oil derricks. Pretty this much. This is what it comes down to. He wants to. He wants to sell off, like he wants to sell off Yellowstone and he wants to sell off the Black Hills and all this shit and put up oil derricks. This is yeah. what this man wants to do. I cannot think of a more glorious sight approaching people cresting the the. The Rocky Mountains come over the hills and the the glorious sight of a haze of coal fumes and guys uh, getting their arms cut off. and Yeah, because that's what we want to see when we go on America. road trips with our families, you know. America, fuck yes. That is that is what. Not just America, it's America. And America, this... fuck yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Hold on, and... wait, let me, sh- let me adjust my balls. Hold on. <laughs> Because in America, everybody has giant balls. Yes, even the women. Uh, but yes. Uh, and, and they do note in this article that although Cruz attached the amendment to a bill intended to benefit sportsmen by expanding hunting, fishing, and shooting opportunities on public lands, sportsmen do not support efforts to seize or sell off federal lands. No, so, they do not. So it, it's, a good, it's good. They're it's like, yeah, we'll hunt on this thing, but we don't want you to sell it off here. Right. Yeah, and here's the thing. Like, there is some limited amount of mining, logging, not drilling, but mining, logging, um, hunting, fishing, that kind of thing. There is a limited amount of that already allowed on public land. Um, speaking personally, in the Black Hills of Maryland, certain certain areas at certain times of the year, yes, you are allowed to do certain. You are allowed to go hunting there. Um, they do some very controlled logging there, so it's not like these places are basically zoos for wildlife where nothing is ever allowed to happen it's just that it has to be done in a very measured fashion and this guy apparently just wants to sell it off and like clear fell the entire redwood forest of california for a fucking shopping mall yeah and it's like we have enough shopping malls all right i mean mean, if you're gonna put shopping malls anywhere i mean look down here my my hometown of graceville florida we have spaces you could probably change into shopping malls. You probably have a church behind it, but you could you could have a, <laughs> a shopping mall here. Banana Republic and Methodist Church. Pretty much, <laughs> we could actually it could actually almost happen because we have that many churches here. Of course I mean, you can. And of course, How and, many and churches technically we do have a mall, but it could be expanded. 
it, it really could. It could use some expansion. It could use businesses coming in to this mall and selling shit and people actually going and buying their shit there instead of going off 30 miles to another mall. Or spending or spending their hard earned money on meth or something. I don't know. Yeah. I don't I don't know what you people do in Florida. That's a little too far south for my liking. <laughs> well it, well I used to joke that we have uh, that we would have uh, churches in the front with meth labs in the back. It wouldn't surprise me if that actually happened. <laughs> and not just meth labs, drive through meth labs. Drive through meth lab, yes, I like that. Yes. Get your shake and bake in twenty minutes or less. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. But you brought up California. And so we're going we're gonna to move to something a little relatively lighter. Um, no, it's but, not lighter. It's just a different brand of crazy altogether. Yeah. Just when we thought the Nanny from Hell saga was finally coming in to an end, this happens. Uh, yesterday, 64-year-old Diane Stratton finally announced she'd be moving out of the Bracamont family's home in Upland, California on July 6th after she initially refused to leave. Um, I don't think what it says here in this article is basically she was brought in to be a babysitter and, you know, for a while it was yeah. okay. And then she just up and decided not to do her job and decided to just, you know, you know, mooch off of these guys, you know, and made all yeah. these and, and made some other demands and everything. And she's still planning on leaving. But only if the family meets her insane de- list of demands. And she sent the family a letter that read as follows. <clears throat> I will voluntarily agree to leave by 6 p.m. <laughs> on July 6, 2014, if each and all of the following conditions are met. Number one, my Wi-Fi and TV and house and air conditioning and water must be continuously on until I vacate. Electricity in my room must be operational. Number two, bathrooms must be stocked up with toilet paper and hand soap at all times. Number three, Marcella and kids must vacate the premises between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. until July 6, 2014, whether I elect to leave during the day or not. Between the hours of 5 and 8, 5 p.m. and 8 a.m., I have full access to my room, the uh, garage bathroom, and the areas of the house between the front door and my bedroom. I will not linger in these areas. Number five, and this one, oh God, I am either given access to healthy food or given $200 to eat out. That access to food shall be limited two hours between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Number six, Neither the front door nor my bedroom shall be locked in a manner that prevents me from entering. This means the chain must be off and the locks cannot be changed. In exchange for the above, I will agree to not seek any of my legal remedies for your past violations of our agreement. <laughs> Lady, you are squatting. Gesundheit. Excuse me, I seem to be allergic to that level of stupid because holy shit. I remember reading about this woman, but I... Did not realize she had approached this level of critical mass crazy. Yeah. I mean, this is the same lady. Okay, lady, Miss m- 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 Stratton, okay, you are staying there illegally. They have told you to leave. You were brought in to do a job. You stopped doing your job. Therefore, they have the right to kick your ass to the curb. I don't care if you're 64 years old. You are obviously in your relatively speaking, right frame of mind to she's, pull she's this kind least, of bullshit. Yeah, she's at least mentally organized enough to have assembled this list. And can I just say the funniest fuck? like, even though it's not a funny situation, the funniest fucking thing about this list to me personally mm-hmm. is the fact that all of these things are very, very specific, which indicates to me that the family has at some point tried all of these things in order to get her to leave. Like, they've cut the electricity and water to her room. They've, like left the bathrooms unstocked from toilet paper and soap. They've tried to keep her from entering. They've tried to lock her out, which is all normal stuff, but the the trying to chase her out by not letting her use toilet paper thing, I think, is pretty original. Frankly, if, if nobody let me use toilet paper, I would be disinclined to live at that house either. Yeah. But holy fucking shit, this woman is insane. I'm going to have to go read up more on this case because I don't know how there's – the second that woman decided she was not going to leave my house, I would be calling the cops and saying, yeah, there's an intruder in my house. 
Yeah, no, she's 65 years old and eating all of my food. Pretty much. She's sitting on the couch right now, porking up on Doritos like an unwelcome brain tumor. <laughs> if you don't come right now, I'm going to garrote her with my socks. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm actually going to try and skip down. I'm going to skip down one more story here to uh, Madison County, Florida. Because there are some, there are some stories, including a couple that I wanted to cover last time, but never got much of a chance to because of time. Uh, but this one, uh, Madison County, Florida, the owner of Caboodle Ranch admitted w- at, at a hearing last week that he had 45 cats on his property, which violates the county county ordinance of 30. It also violates the court order entered when he reached a plea agreement in his animal neglect case last year. Caboodle owner Craig Grant told the judge he was moving out of Florida and taking the cats with him. The judge gave him till October 1st to do so, told him not to collect any more animals, and said there could be unannounced inspections. In May 2013, Grant, who's from Pont Verde Beach, reached an agreement with the prosecutors, allowing him to avoid a trial on animal cruelty charges if he pays court costs, receives counseling, and complies with the county's limit on the number of domestic animals kept. Counseling! They have counseling for collecting cats! It's just hoarding counseling, actually. Don't ask how I know this. Well, it's probably what But it, yes, yeah, it is. It's I'm just sure like regular right. hoarding counseling. But at the same time, on the one hand, um, yes, the law says you cannot have 45 cats. And on the other hand, when I was reading this before I got down to the bottom of the article, um, I thought, well, it's not like you can fence cats in. They could be coming and going. If they're not registered to him, he has no way of keeping track of them. Um, apart from fixing them, there's not much you can really do. And then I read Grant owns the animal sanctuary where nearly 700 cats were seized in 2012. Yeah. Grant. Wow. First of all, I cannot fathom. I realize Florida has a lot of ranches that are fairly roomy, but unless you have a ranch the size of fucking Rhode Island, you have nowhere to keep seven hundred fucking cats yeah i mean 700 cats if if you could probably have 700 cats take over my town and well okay maybe not quite because we do have at least three thousand people here but seven well maybe they could 700 cats oh my god the cuteness proximity it would be lethal i live in baltimore i don't think there are 700 cats in my vicinity yeah so she yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? This is like really crazy good. cat man. Yes. Crazy cat person. Yes. Uh, this is this is what you do not do with cats. I love cats. I, I my girlfriend knows how to make me squee by just showing me cute cat pictures. Same with me. But seven hundred is a few too many. Yes. Forty five. Forty five is about forty one too many. Yeah. It's like it's like no two or three cats maybe for me. I, I personally would like to just have one and have a little companion. You yeah. know, have a little kitten that'll sometimes climb up on my leg, climb up on the desk while I'm working on stuff. I sit there and pet it. It would be awesome. But uh... <laughs> but you, you can't always guarantee cats. We have two cats, and they're both terrible animals. Yeah. But yeah, mm-hmm. this guy doesn't even say what they're doing to this guy. No, I really – because I... usually when something like this breaks, you are barred from owning any animals at all. Like you can't even own a fucking goldfish. Yeah. But it looks I'm, – I'm willing to bet they're probably just going to toss the book at him several times. I hope so. Yeah, with a trebuchet. I think it's what I, I'm bored I would say I, I would make a three-figure sum donation to the Humane Society to be in the audience if they actually do that. There you launch, go. Launch a book at this guy with a trebuchet. In fact, that should be that should be a, a fundraiser for the <laughs> ISCA or for the Humane Society or something. Just – Yes, here we go. We are going to, you know, throw an actual book at this guy. We are gonna, we are gonna hit this man with a with a cattle prod or something. And you have to pay five bucks and you can watch. There you 50 go. Fifty bucks, fifty bucks, and you can actually take a swing. Sweet. Oh, and speaking of taking people, we we need to take swings at. A seven, oh, this. This one, yes. A 17-year-old Virginia teenager who is under investigation for sending a consensual sext to his 15-year-old girlfriend may be forced to have an erection in front of police as evidence in the case. The boy, who the Washington Post will not identify for privacy reasons, is being charged with two felonies. One for possession of child pornography, the sex from his girlfriend, and one for manufacturing child pornography, taking the stuff, taking the video of himself. He faces time in prison as well as permanent placement on the sex offender registry. 
Now, here's the thing. Police have already taken photos of the boy's genitals as part of their investigation, his lawyer told the Post. But they want to bring the teen to the hospital and inject him with something that will force an erection to compare his erect penis to that in the video found on his phone. What the actual fuck? It's just, no. Number one, that's that's not proper way of getting your information and finding that out. Okay, that that just just no, no. No, this is this like court ordered boner. Incidentally, in the conversation we had discussing this article in the first place, I declared that court ordered boner would be a good name for a rock band. It would be. But I mean, there's <laughs> possibly like a very small range of circumstances where I could see court ordering somebody to have a boner for comparison's sake. Like, like if this guy was a thirty year old man and he was sending unwanted, unsolicited, dirty text messages to a fifteen year old girl. And was then claiming that his phone had been taken and used without his consent, and it was not, in fact, his yeah, junk yeah. on the video. I could see wanting photographs of his man parts in order to compare them so that, you know, is, is there a funny mole? Does he have a tattoo, a piercing, what? Just mm-hmm. to be able to compare them to prove definitively that it is his junk so that he can be sent to jail for sending dick pics to a 13-year-old. But that's not the case here. Yeah, this is teenagers doing what teenagers do. And as far as I can tell, he's he's seems to have admitted, yeah, that's my dick. That's that's my that's my penis there. Yeah, so there's no reason to do it, you know, or you know, there was no reason to begin with. I just don't like the fact that they are charging him because I've I've not read anywhere else that the girl is getting charged with anything because if which he's is unusual, char- yeah. it's usually the other way around. Yeah. You would think at least, you know, if you're going to charge them, charge them both. I don't agree with the charges because, for so. one, it's consensual and it's between two minors. And guess what? Yeah. They, they, yeah, yeah, they're, they may not be fully understanding of all of the consequences, but they understand enough. Okay, this is what we want to do. This is, you know, this we is want how to, we accomplish it. Yeah, and there you go. From what I'm seeing, yeah. they, they, they are in, you know, the right frame of mind enough to understand what's going on. Yeah, it's not like one of them – I mean it doesn't say. I feel like if one of them was mentally handicapped, then they would be making a really big deal out of it. But that again, that doesn't seem to be the case here. It's just a 17-year-old and a 15-year-old showing each other their no-no parts. I mean going by this logic, everybody listening to this right now, including you and me, mm-hmm. or at least everybody, almost everybody listening to this right now should probably be in jail for diddling a minor because we all probably started masturbating when we were like 10. Yeah. And, so, and or, some of or, us even lost our virginity when we were minors. Hi, I lost mine at 14. Ooh, early bloomer. Yes. But seriously, provi- provided it's a consensual encounter, and it does appear to be because no sexual assault case is being filed. Yeah, it's just... and, and It's just also... the existence of these pictures. Again, there, I've, I've heard about this very, very occasionally, um, where... High school students are trying – they're trying to charge high school students with possession and manufacture of child pornography for taking naked pictures of themselves. Yeah. But I don't think – I do not believe if any of them have held up in court, they have been overturned later on appeal. Yeah, so, because it's like – because for one thing, it's not child porn. Well, I mean it would be. It's, it's a funny thing. If somebody else had taken it, it would be child porn. But – you can't apply that kind of blind black and white logic to everything here. He took the pictures himself. Was it stupid? Yes. It was a radiantly unintelligent thing to do, but I think he knows that now. So, yeah, can we just put this clusterfuck to bed? Yeah, just about. Uh, the, the, the article does say that um, – uh, let's see, the last couple lines of this article, they say that there are – there are actual risks when it's used for cyberbullying, but teens actually overall report positive experiences sexting, and there is no indication that it leads to more deviant behavior. And meanwhile, the amount of manipulative sexting is on the decline. So these, it's odds are it's more and more these teens are not being manipulated into it. They're not manipulating others. They're just like, mm-hmm. hey, we're, we're horny. We want to masturbate to each other's naked bodies. Yeah, pretty it's, much. It's, you know, because it's a what is it? It's a natural thing. And as for how this all got started in the first place, I, I, I think it was the girl's mother saw it and decided to just throw, you know, have the police throw the book at him. You know, because this is she was so stupid. Because she was morally, morally, more morally offended because her daughter is actually sexualized and and, and is actually sexual. Because I mean, I can see getting mad because your kid is a minor. I mean, yeah. your kid is fifteen. 
Yeah. Maybe, maybe well. loosen. Don't cut the apron strings, but maybe loosen them a tiny little bit. Um, yeah. Because whether you realize it or not, she is going to be seeing man parts. Um, yeah. Or woman parts, other than her own. Yeah. Depending on how you she know, swings. She's going to be well, – clearly she swings at least partly that way. Although yeah. it would not surprise me if everybody involved in this just decided they no longer wanted to have sex with anybody ever under any condition and <laughs> became, like, Buddhist yeah. monks or something. Yeah. Although uh, there is an update. Right before the show, I got an update on this one, and uh, there was a whole bunch of backlash from everybody because, cause of course, the internet gets a hold of it, and they're like, what the fuck? No, uh, no, 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 you motherfuckers. And, then, and the cops over there are like, no, no, okay, okay, we're not going to do it. Not going to do it. Yeah, that's so so hooray. Silver silver lining there, but the kid's already scarred for fucking life. Yeah. Oh lordy. So so okay. Going down to back to, it looks like back down to Texas. Uh well not quite down to Texas yet. I'm actually there's actually one that kinda ties into uh well it does tie a little bit into Texas because it ties into uh what's his name? Uh, Ted Cruz and his crusade. No pun intended. Oh god. And um, this, this – if you heard about these coal rollers. I hadn't until until I read this article. I've seen them, but I didn't know they had a name. Yeah. These are pickup trucks that are customized to spew black smoke into the air, and they're, they are quickly becoming the newest weapon in the culture wars. Coal rollers are diesel trucks modified with chimneys and equipment that can force extra fuel into the engine, causing dark black smoke to pour out of the chimney sna- stacks. These modifications are not new, but a slate's Dave Weigel Weigel pointed out on Weigel. Weigel? All right. pointed out on Thursday. Rolling coal has begun to take on a political dimension, with pickup drivers increasingly increasingly viewing their smokestacks as a form of protest against environmentalists and the Obama administration emis, emissions regulations. So, in other words, oh, you're going to put all these regulations on how we do our job and blah, 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 blah. well, it will fuck you. <laughs> It's the, yeah. they're polluting the environment out of spite. Yes, and the stupidest thing it says. Um, what does it say? I'm sorry, I'm gonna skip down a little bit here. Yeah, dirt, 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 dirt. Uh, what I, I actually watched a video of one of, of, of like a group of these guys doing this, and yes. the smoke was so thick, it, you you could tell it was blinding the driver behind them. Yeah, I mean. Environmental reasons notwithstanding, that's dangerous. If you have one guy, if you have three guys doing that on the highway all at rush hour, yeah, um, people are going to get. First of all, it's nasty. It smells. It's going to make people sick. Mm-hmm. It's also going to make people not know where the fuck they're going. Ah, oh, here's here's the thing. Hmm. It's just uh, last month, uh, it was noted that many coal rollers focus their fumes on, quote, nature nuffies, or people who drive hybrids, and rice burners, or Japanese-made cars. First wow. of all, you racist motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. Second of all, just focusing them on specifically people who you think, by the existence of their cars, are invalidating your penis compensation vehicle. Um, that's the equivalent of not liking anti-drug campaigns and deciding to spew meth smoke in the face of somebody you think is responsible even tangentially. Like, somebody is not smoking meth, so you're just gonna go and blow smoke in their face. Because, fuck logic, that's why. Because you're a douchebag. And yeah. a racist douchebag. Yeah, definitely, because it's like, rice... Yeah. Oh, god yeah. damn it. And there's, the quotes from these guys are priceless. They apparently got enough guys to comment on this article. And, yeah... Says, uh, this, where is this? I think it's Texas. I don't know. It doesn't say where this guy is from, but it says, the guy's saying, the feeling around here is that everybody who drives a small car is a liberal. A roller called Ryan said, I rolled, I rolled on a Prius once just because he was trailing me. That is douchery. It's like, okay, you know what? Cars are going to get behind you. It Traffic yeah, happens. Prius. Oh my god, it's a Prius. Let's roll him. No. Wow, no. that's like that's like that's like emphysemic Batman there. Congratulations. <laughs> you go. Well, if they keep it up, they're going to cause a whole bunch of emphysema Batmans and Batwomen too. They're just going to call. No, it's going to be emphysema douchebaggery. It's like, uh... Yeah, and there's the other quote is: "I run into a lot of people that don't really like Obama at all." Says a salesperson. If he's into the environment, if he's into this or that, we're not. I hear a lot of that. 
to get a single stack on my truck, that's my way of giving them the finger. You want clear air and a tiny carbon footprint? Well, screw you. Well, Again, fuck this... you too, Mr. Salesperson. You're making Seriously. it worse for the rest of us. Just because you don't like, oh, we don't like you green hippies hugging trees and, and trying to save the environment. We don't like that that, 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 that black guy in the West. Or, I mean, oh, we don't like our president. So we're yeah, just we, going we to... Ain't, we ain't be liking that nigga in the White House. Pretty much. Yeah. But this is, again, it is purely out of contrarian instinct. It's one thing to oppose official policy. That's normal. That is downright motherfucking American. But it's one thing to oppose policy, and it's another altogether to simply knee-jerk do the opposite thing because you don't like the guy responsible. Again, I'm going to drive drunk just because I don't like your alcohol policies or something like that. Yeah. Uh... Especially when you're doing something that dangerous and that filthy. Mm-hmm. Congrat- congratulations, you're you're a jackass. Yeah, your your spitefulness is helping destroy the environment. You dumbasses. Yeah, and the way the way to draw attention to your to your cause is not like this. Granted, there are probably a lot of otherwise sane people who have issues with with the energy laws, mm-hmm. but these people are the loud ones. Every group, every country has its crazy people. It's just that in America, we have them in fucking public office. Public office, you know, working roads everywhere. Some some of them even host podcasts. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. <clears throat> uh, speaking of crazy people, last one for this week, and this is one I've really wanted to get to. This is one of the ones I had, on the la- uh, had ready up for the last show. Out of New York. I've been to New York. So have I. I used to live in New York. Yeah. I feel like I'm really glad I don't live there anymore, though. <laughs> oh. Now, see, if you would still live there when I went to uh, Comic-Con last year, we could have met up. That would have been great. But... I don't think I could have afforded to go to Comic-Con unless I sold a kidney. Well, you get... you didn't have to go to the con. We had a couple of extra days afterwards. Uh... Anyway, continue. And so, yeah. Sidetrack here. Okay. A, normal, a former, rather, New York Police Department officer left jail on Tuesday after a judge stunned prosecutors and overturned his conviction in a sensational case accusing him of plotting on the internet to kidnap, kill, and eat young women, including his wife. Giggity. You let Hannibal Lecter out of jail. Thank you very much. Uh, judge Paul Gardif ruled late Monday that there was insufficient evidence to support a jury's, gir- jury's guilty verdict – I swear I speak well. In the I, kidnapping... I, I word could. Yes. Uh, to to uh, support a jury's verdict in the kidnapping conspiracy conviction of Gilberto Val. Or Vale. I think it's Valley. Valley? Okay. He agreed with defense arguments that the defendant's bizarre exchanges in fetish chat rooms about canalizing women never put anyone in danger. Valet's depraved, misogynistic sexual fantasies about his wife, former college classmates, and acquaintances undoubtedly reflected a diseased mind, the judge wrote. But, he added, prosecutors failed to prove that he had entered into genuine agreements to kidnap women and taken concrete steps to carry them out. Oh, this guy. I don't, I don't know. On the one hand, it could be just like technical red tape kind of thing. Because it says he was using police databases in order to get personal information of women who lived alone or that he saw as, as good potential victims, which is no, 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 big bozo, no, 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 put this guy in a box. But um, at the same time, again, don't – another one of those, don't ask how I know this, just accept that I do. Um, vor fetish is a thing, and not everybody who's into it um, wants to kill and eat people. Yeah. But also 90% of the people who are into it are also not police officers with access to sensitive information for women like, say, it doesn't say specifically that he was after these kinds of women, but I'm going to go out on a limb limb and say possibly he was after um, women like prostitutes and drug addicts and other homeless women who would be easy to dispose of and not missed. Yeah, it's like he's wanting to go Sweeney Todd on them. Hmm. But oh yeah. god, and and you know if it was if you know taking taking away from taking away the uh, police database thing, which obviously he you know yeah he should be in trouble for that, and it yes. does say in this article he was fired, so yes. he is no longer a cop, at, at least as far as we know. No. So I, I I'm gonna 
probably say that he's never going to be eligible for another job again in his life. No, so he, he's just going to have to try and, and develop some kind of artsy things and try and put his ass out on Patreon you know, to earn money. Or maybe he could do some of the things that other people do when they have no other options. Um, go into porn. There you go. He could do he could do vor porn. He'd probably enjoy that. There you go. Vor porn. Yay. Wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Hey, it's there's there's a market for it. Anyway, continue. Yes, I'm I'm listening. But yes. Um but you know, the database searching aside, which do, which not only, you know, breaks the rules of the department and and obviously breaking some kind of law, I'm sure. You know, yeah, be, be be punished for that. And plus, it does make it look bad. Like, you know, is he really looking for for these victims? You know, if, if you take that yeah. out, if you take that out and all it is is him basically talking to somebody and saying, oh, I want to eat her. Oh, you, you, you want to go down on her and make her feel all tingly? No, I mean, I really want to eat her. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If it was just him and his buddies talking about it, that would be one thing. But what, at least for me, is – and I'm sure it's for a lot of other people too – the whole database searching thing to find out different women and, and details of their lives, that might start constituting, okay, he's starting to plot something, especially if he is using this to to, to talk about different people, and it could, it could start and, – and even if he doesn't, he's talking to other like-minded people. How yes. do you know they're not going to go do it? He's he's in chat rooms with other guys saying, "I want her to experience being cooked alive. She'll be trussed up like a turkey and terrified and screaming and crying," and talking about um, a specific woman that he says they could with with his chat room vor fetish buddies saying that he could prey on the, this woman because she lived alone, and men discussing cooking her, basted in olive oil over an open fire, and using her severed head as a centerpiece for a sit down meal. He's also yeah. found that they found his search history for the internet. Incidentally, dumb fucking man. If I was going to look up something that illegal, I'd do it in fucking incognito mode or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's, his search history uncovered that he was trying to find out how to obtain and knock somebody out with chloroform and getting torture devices and other tools. Gee. Now, this this uh. doesn't exactly it doesn't exactly offer concrete one hundred percent evidence that he's trying to kill eat, torture a woman, but it doesn't exactly do anything to argue against it. No, it doesn't. It just, it's, yeah, you are, you are, yeah, sir, I'm, I'm glad you are no longer able to be a cop. And now yes. you get out there with you don't everybody have, You else. don't have a taser anymore. You don't have a gun. You should not be legally allowed to own anything more dangerous than a pair of toenail clippers. Or even those. Yeah, somebody, yeah. we're going to have to send you to the vet and we will clip you there. Yeah, or you don't, or you know what? You you could also get very fucking flexible and chew off your own toenails. Do you it's, really have to be that flexible? No, oh, well, you can be. Well, I used to be able to, but not anymore. I used to. Be and able now to... everybody's like, "Oh no, you didn't." Yes, I did. Here, well, I used to be able to put my feet behind my head. Well, there you go. You're I, 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 I never got to be able to put my. I never got to be that particularly flexible, but you know, as I got older, my gut got a little bigger. You know. Yes. So that happens. I know how I know how that feels. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so yeah, that so, that we got we got like two minutes left. Uh, are we gonna Are we gonna talk about Are we gonna talk about the phoenix that is Todd Aiken? Oh God. Okay. We we can we can we can poke at him just a little bit just just for a little bit real quickly here because yeah. um because Todd Aiken oh I hate this guy and, yes. and I know Cat is not a big fan of him either because he is he he he's one of those politicians in Missouri. Uh, that ought to, that ought, he's a Republican politician in Missouri, oh, which yeah. automatically makes him a, like beneath contempt. But yeah. apparently, he's published, uh, he's he's put out a new book called dirt, 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 uh, "Firing Back: Talk, Taking on the polit- Political Party Bosses and Media Elite to Protect Our Faith and Freedom." And, and it's just is, it rehashes is. all of his bullshit. This is this is a quote. It's not from the book, but this is a quote from an interview he gave about it, where he is again rehashing his belief that you know if a woman is legitimate. Ouch! I just hit myself in the head. If a woman is legitimately yes, this is so stupid it makes me want to beat myself to death. A woman is legitimately raped. Her body will shut it down, and she won't get pregnant. This is a quote from him. He says, "When a woman claims to have been raped, the police determine that the evidence supports the legal definition of rape." 
Is it a legitimate claim of rape or an excuse to avoid an unwanted pregnancy? Are the police warranted to take action against a crime or not? In short, the word legitimate modifies the claim and not the action. There have been women who have lied about being raped, as Norma McCorvey did in the U.S. Supreme Court. The infamous Roe v. Wade decision of 1973 was based on a lie. What? Incidentally, incidentally I believe... I believe there is slightly something to that in that the case could not go forward if she did not claim to have been sexually assaulted. The only way that that the legality of abortion could be effectively argued was if she came off as like an ultimate victim. Um, which, which I believe. I don't quote me. Yeah. Which, if if that's true, then it's kind of sad. I mean, I'm glad that Roe v. Wade, you know, happened and that me it too. all came out. I. I you know, it's probably like a few other yeah. things that have been good. Don't like the the way it came about. Yeah. So I, I guess I, I the ends less, do justify the means a little bit there. And I'm less and, thrilled about Todd Aiken existing. Like yeah. I, have nev- I have never wanted a man. He says he says uh, my comment about a woman's body shutting pregnancy down was directed on the impact of stress on fertilization. This is something fertility doctors debate and discuss. Do you doubt me? Google stress and fertilization, and you will find a library of research on the subject. First of all, obviously it's on the internet, so it's true. Second of all, I have never wanted a man to be able to become pregnant more than I do right now. Yeah, somebody get on that, make Todd Aiken pregnant, and okay. and, and force it upon him. Force it upon yes. him so that way his body could shut it down. Yes, but again, going by this logic, let's, let's just flip it around a little bit. Um, anybody out there ever seen a picture of what they thought was a really hot chick? It turned out to be a dude. Anybody? Uh, I... Have you Have you ever? Actually, I have. <laughs> okay, but did you did you get a boner? Um, I don't think I did. It, it's been a long okay. time since so... that's happened, so. But see, if it was, if it was, see, you're you're not gay though. You're straight. But you see, you must actually be gay because if it was legitimate heterosexuality, your body would find a way to shut that down. Right. You see where that logic's going? Oh yeah, because sure, because we control when our brain yes. just just goes down there and tells our body parts, "Hey, I want to fuck now." Yeah, or you know, your body can't. You cannot. Uh, with with possible exception of a few people, you generally can't like mind over matter your your sexual things. With the exception of my boyfriend, who is a mutant. Yeah. But you can't mind over matter that. Like, if it's every every fourteen year old boy knows this, they're inconvenient, totally inappropriate, unwanted boners. Yeah. Um, it happens. It happens. It happens that, to everybody, but, really. Yes. Because, yeah, yeah, you don't have the penis to get the boners, but I'm sure there are times yeah. you're walking around and all of a sudden, why are my panties wet? Yes, it does happen occasionally. Yeah. So for there me, you go. for me, it's for me, it's it's less about I didn't realize that was that was a chick slash guy, and more about I had no idea that was underage. Now I feel like a dirty old man. Oh, I will, yeah. I will, I will amend this. I do not go after underage people but if i see somebody and they're attractive and then i find out later they're underage it's like wow i feel like a dirty old woman but it does not stop the fact that i found them attractive yeah but this doesn't have to do with sexual arousal this has to do with a woman getting pregnant which yes todd aiken can happen from rape yes todd aiken there is such thing as a rape pregnancy yes it has happened to plenty of women and it will continue happening to them, and they will continue getting severely injured and possibly killed, terminating their unwanted pregnancies because waste of space intellectual amoebas like you insist on restricting their right to abortion. Have a nice yeah. day. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm also looking at you, Rick Perry. Fuck yes. you, Rick Perry. But you're yeah. looking in opposite directions, so you must look like a chameleon right now. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> All right. So on and that had... note, on that note, we are going to go ahead and get out of here for this week. Went a little over, but you know what? We needed to get that out there because Todd yes. Aiken just needs to go and fucking crawl in a hole, and yes. not in one that brings him pleasure either. Make it a foxhole with a rabid fox that okay. loves testicles. Yes, we because, need this to happen. Because fuck him, man. Yes. So anyway, if we wanted to find Axiom on the internet and talk to her and get, learn more about what is going on in her mind or maybe talk about Clara Bow, where could we find her? Um, well, at this point, I don't really have much of an online presence apart from Facebook, and I don't really use my Facebook for um, anything but close friends. But um, viewers have your contact information, and I can always answer emails through the site. There you go. And in fact, if you wanted – okay, so if you wanted to contact her, the site – I. I do keep forgetting to bring this up in every show, but we do have a Facebook page. You know, 
and you can always send messages there. I can forward them to her from there. Yeah, just 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 at Axiom, I will see them. Yes, or or even better, I should I should add you as an admin on there, and then you can get them directly. <laughs> All right. Yes, I will have power over your account, and there will be pictures of kittens there every day. There you go. Yay. <laughs> All right. So so that will work. But if you wanted to find me personally, I'm on the Twitters and the Tumblers at gomer 21 X. My stuff is, of course, at rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. And if you like this show, if you like all the other stuff that I put out there, uh, Constructive Deconstruction, Port Charlie Podcast, the various Let's Play videos I'm doing. Plus, I'm going to be doing a little bit more reviews because especially one of the perks of my Patreon is you get to choose something for me to review or a guest spot. And one of the people that did that particular perk at asked for a review. I'm just waiting on the DVD to come in at this point. And what are you reviewing? I've got to know what are you reviewing. I am not telling you on air. <laughs> it's a surprise. <laughs> it's a surprise. Okay, I, Mama. I will, I, I will tell you off the air. Okay, so, Mama. Okay. But anyway, if, if you want to help toss money at, at, at different productions and help support me with these things, then head on over to patreon.com slash gomer 21 double X. And as a bonus, if you like if you want to get some fabulous artwork done by a very fabulous artist and an award winning animator, <clears throat> then check out my girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, who also has her own Patreon page at patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Uh, if you donate enough, she will do a 30 second animation for you, which will be awesome. Yes, it will. Go yes. donate. Do the yes. thing. Go, click go. the buttons. Yes, click all the buttons. So, uh, again, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time, which, if schedules work out, we should have Vera Gunn, who is the, the uh, one of the head people of Nerdvice, along with the Omega next week, because next weekend is Con Bravo weekend. And well, we know what you're doing. No, I'm not going to be there. Con Bravo's in Canada. <laughs> uh, and, and I've still got I've still got to get my passport redone anyway, and even without that, it takes money. And, yes, I'm, and I'm saving up for MacFest. <laughs> of course you are. So, uh, so with because any... that because those vintage tentacle porn DVDs do not buy themselves. Exactly. Uh, All right. So again, thank you guys for listening, and and look forward to the Omega with Vera Gun next week. Hopefully, uh, cr- crossing fingers that schedules will work out. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Axiom signing off. Good night, children. Thespian Talk is an R.T. Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.